Kenny. How's it going? Great. How are you? Great no, to have good. you with us. Nice to have you here. It's great to be here. You now you do a lot of a lot of natives. I do yeah. too, actually. I mean there there are other things I'm interested in, but um I sell natives, uh, those that are that are uh, proximate to me that I can get out to. I, I I'm not breeding them though. I'm selling yeah. uh, I'm selling wild caught, which makes it a little a little different. I've got a bunch of orders right now for um, Everglade eye, Ellison Everglade, the pygmy sunfish. Yeah, actually, I, I wanted to place an order with you for, for some of those, actually. I think we were oh. talking about that last week. <laughs> right. Well, I've got orders for about 20 of them, so i got to get out and collect. I'll be, do <laughs> I'll be doing yeah. that later in the week. And I, it's, a, it's like an hour and a half drive to get to my collecting spot. So it's, and and then uh, it's not difficult getting in there, but I'm getting old and weak. So <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get out and do more, uh, do more walking, more exercise so that yeah. I can, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get out and do more, yeah. uh, I got, got do more walking, more exercise. I got it. I got this all. Yeah. I can uh, <laughs> hold on a yeah, minute. I need Try to get out and do more. There we are. All right. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna shut my dehumidifier off real quick so that doesn't start up and cause all kinds okay. of ruckus. Hmm. I'm not getting. <clears throat> oh, there we go. Okay. All right. Crown tail half moon. Hello, hello. Monster fish cow. Lori's here. Nice to see you. Grandwood. Lori. Got to lurk till I fall asleep, Grand says. <laughs> we'll try to keep you awake, Grand. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully I'm not too boring. So this is um <laughs> this is actually the third in a series that I've done um, of these NOAA project videos. The purpose of this is to, is to spend some quality time with people who have fish rooms or are doing unique or interesting things with fish and get a sense of what they're involved in, how they're doing, what they're doing, why they're doing it. Um, and, and with that, create a library that'll make it possible for new people to come in and, and get some ideas about how they can set up their own fish room. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the plug on my mic because um, I, I don't know why I keep using this thing. I find it irritating. Uh, it, it might take a There, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Good. Okay. All right. I think that'll make it a little easier to me. So you're doing primarily are you doing primarily natives? What's, uh, what's the nature of your operation? Yeah, I'm exclusively keeping North American natives. Oh, okay. Uh, I, from, I I mean I've I've had so I've got about 22 years in the hobby as a hobbyist, and at least half of that was in salt water with coral reef and 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 everything. But uh, so it was only till it was only about uh, two years ago that I started keeping North American natives and wanted to get more into that. So that's what I keep right now is exclusively uh, North American natives. Uh, so you're not doing salt water anymore. No, no. I actually, up until uh, up until about two months ago, I did have a a fifteen gallon nano reef, oh. and I sold sold that off just because I didn't 
I didn't feel like I invested enough uh, time and energy into it. So now, yeah. what's your approach to setting up a native tank? What do you? How do you go about it? What do you try to achieve with the tank? Not just not with the fish, but with the environment. Uh, so all of all of my tanks that I have set up that are scaped and not you know not tanks that I just have fish in for breeding purposes. Um, all of my actual tanks that I have set up and running are biotopes. So I you know when I when I'm gonna set up an aquarium. I find a specific biotope that I want to emulate and, you know, in, a, in an aquarium. And uh, that's just, you know, I do as much research on it as I can find, find fish that cohabitate in those, in those uh, areas. And then, uh, you know, I take it from there. Uh-huh. So are you doing, uh, what, how do you do your substrate? So I, I do a, uh, so I do a one inch uh, dirt layer. Usually I use uh, or, uh, a mix of organic topsoil and uh, I use uh, dolomite lime in it, uh, worm castings and, you know, mix the leaf litter and stuff. And then I do a, a two to two and a half inch cap with uh, locally collected river sand and, uh, you know, creek bed sand and stuff like that. Have you tried using uh, native mud? Yep. Yeah, I uh, actually every all of my all of my hardscape materials and substrates and everything are all locally collected. Ah, wonderful. Okay, so you're you're really doing the best you can to duplicate that natural natural yeah, environment. Yeah. What about your water? Uh, the water I use I use uh treated tap water, so I I usually age it or I'll. I'll use uh, dechlorinators in it and stuff. What are your parameters? In your data um, so, in in the tanks themselves, or do you change parameters based on the fish at all, or based if, on the biotope? So, oh, okay. So, if the biotope is like dramatically different as far as pH goes from most of my other tanks, then I will. I will try to adjust the 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 uh, water parameters accordingly. So you know, I'll use like if it's really soft water, I'll use peat, uh, white peat in the substrate to to lower the pH and stuff. Okay. White peat, you said. Yeah. What is white? I'm not familiar with that. It's a. Uh, it's, so it's a type of peat moss. It's just white peat, I guess. Really. Yeah. I've never seen it. That's funny. <laughs> I've used a lot of peat. I use a lot of peat. Uh, I think it's Canadian peat, actually. Yeah. So, uh, so for uh, for some of the softer water tanks that I've I've set up, I use um, I use a substrate called BioTerra. Um, that's the only thing that I I use that's not uh, locally collected. But that's a it's more of an organic potting soil. Um, but it consists of white peat, uh, dolomite lime, uh, sphagnum moss, and uh, uh, cocoa fiber. Okay, so it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna tend to be or want to be acidic except for the dolomite. Yeah. yeah, so the dolomite will will help balance things out so it doesn't fluctuate a lot. Right, right. Um, yeah, I've, I've come, I, I've been using lime for about four years now, I guess, yep. in, my, in my substrate. I never used to use it, um, but it, it does create a better balance. Yeah, it, it works great as a, as a buffer to, to keep things in check. Yeah, exactly. Right. Where do you live? Uh, I'm from New York. You're in New York? Yes. Oh, okay. Upstate or? Near yeah, upstate. upstate, yep. Oh, nice. So you're, so you're near the lakes. Yeah, yeah. Not, not too far from uh, 
from Lake Champlain and stuff, which is actually the, the tank behind me is a Lake Champlain biotope. Oh, nice. Well, let's take a look at it. Show us uh, what you're doing. I'm going to yeah. put you on full screen here. So I'm just going to switch you guys around here for a second. Yeah. No, oh, bear with me. Sorry. Craig Doniger, Chris Trapp, Bass Queen, Misfit, Fish Tropic Canada, EJ. Yes, and hello everybody. I didn't. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to say hi to everybody coming in and saying hi to me. Uh, I'm gonna turn off some lights, real. Chris. Yeah. Craig's Catfish Cave is here. Chris Doniger. Nice to see you, Craig. So, yeah, here we go. This is my 180-gallon uh, Lake oh, Champlain biotope. Six-foot tank. That's a big tank. Yeah. And it, this uh, this tank houses two pumpkin seed sunfish, a bluegill, a rock bass, and a bowfin. Which, un unfortunately, I don't think we'll see the bowfin too much because he's he hides a lot. How big is he? He's about 14 inches. Oh, pretty good size. Yeah. And you can see some of the, like, that's the bluegill there, the pumpkin seed. Such pretty fish. Yeah, the sunfish are so pretty. Yeah. I think it may be one of the most colorful fish in the hobby. Yeah. And fresh water. That's, uh, they have. Uh, where you go? I did just see him. The little, the little rock bass. Oh, okay. See him back there be underneath the leaf? He's in there. <laughs> but yeah, so this is, everything in here is locally collected. Um, the plants, the substrate, the, you know, all the hardscape. Right. And what are the water conditions there? What are you, what are you, what are your parameters? Um, I honestly haven't checked them in a, in quite a while. Uh, last time I checked my pH was 7.6. Um, I, I don't think I've ever checked like KH or GH. Right. Uh, the as far as temperature goes, the temperature ranges from 48 degrees to uh, I think it right now it's 61. 61. So that's, point cool. that's yeah. nice. Yeah. How do you do that in your house? Uh, it's in my basement. My you know this my basement's my fish room. Oh. It's unheated. Right, right, right. For the most part. Nate, have you had any spawning action? Uh, not with these guys yet. I believe they're all males. Oh, okay. Because uh, there, there is a, a bit of aggression. So I'm actually going to be doing some collecting to uh, see if I can get a couple more pumpkin seeds uh, in here to trigger some spawning. But yeah. yeah, the so this this guy here, he's the big the big male, um, and he has been clearing spots out oh, in the nice. sand. So how, how long is that tank? been set up uh so this tank's been set up about four months okay so you set it up in the winter yes yep really nice yeah it's all you know all native plants i've got uh huh. portable and robinsai or you know robin's pond weed um hornwort hornwort right those are the only two plants i have in here and then all, you know, leaf litter and everything. Yeah, it looks wonderful. That's exciting. And there's a there's a whole slew of, you know, microorganisms that are living in here. Right. And you, you really see. don't have anything much eating them, at least not the small ones. So yeah, they're no. going to pretty well be able to 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 uh to become dominant. Yeah, and my so my rock bass is actually only about two inches, and when I put him in here, he was probably an inch and a half, and uh, surprisingly, he's you know he's 
hung in there with these, you know, big pumpkin seed and the, uh, the bofin in there. And, wow. uh, he's, he, you know, I watch him all the time and he just goes through the leaf litter foraging for, for scuds right. and yeah, different yeah, microfauna yeah. and stuff. Neat. Well, the goldfish will do that too. They'll go after scuds. What do you yep. feed? What, what kind of food do you put in there? Uh, so in this tank, I use, uh, I, I use rods, uh, food. So it's a, um, it's a prepared frozen food, but it's all, all fresh ingredients like, uh, krill, um, it's made from yeah, krill, different rods. fishes. Yeah. yeah uh, crayfish, peas. Yeah. It's a really, it's a really high quality, uh, Names. frozen yeah. food. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you tried cultivating? any food yeah so I, I cultivate um live foods for my fry for some of the fish that i'm i'm breeding so i i cultivate um scuds i i cultivate bladder snails ram horn snails uh and then i do also uh copot or uh, cyclops and daphnia and infusoria cultures for some of the little tiny fresh hatched fry and stuff and also baby brine shrimp so what are you breeding uh, i can show you actually good uh so i have this here just to block the glare from the other tank but so these are these are some rainbow shiner fry that uh, I've got. Uh, oh nice they're yeah they're coming along aren't they I've yeah. seen those about a week ago. Yeah, so there's one batch. There's another one. Sorry about the glare. But... Now, how did they spawn? How did you, how did you collect the uh, the fry? Uh, I can show you that too. So this is my great. This is my room in here. This is I call the breeding room. So I've got some of the fish that I'm breeding here. And then another another biotope that I'm working on here and stuff, but I'll get okay. to that in a minute. But the rainbow shiners, uh, this is my breeding group. I've got two or three males and two females. And in the wild, they're nest associates, so they breed over um, uh, creek chub mounds. You know, they sh they share a creek chub mound and use that for breeding. Uh, mm -hmm. So in the aquarium, I I did this. I just you know took a little plastic container with some egg crate light diffuser on it and uh, filled it with stones and it's got a little bit of current in there. So the current comes down and, you know, uh, swirls right here and then and they just spawn over top of the rocks. And uh, you can see they actually spawned this morning. So there's a ton of eggs in there that I'll have to harvest in a little okay. while. So those eggs are not, um, they're not sticky eggs there. No, they, 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 they stick a little through. bit, but, you know, I get in there with a turkey baster and give them a little squirt, and they they come right up. They're not they're not super adhesive. Right. right. Nice. You know, so. So there's, I mean, there's probably two hundred eggs in there right now, just from the two females. Wow. And then, same thing with these guys. These are mountain red-bellied dace. And uh, they, all of these fish that I'm breeding right now are nest associates with either creek chubs or bluehead creek chubs. Oh. And same thing, I just built a little makeshift uh, chub mound. And when they spawn, they'll, they'll do the same thing, spawn over top of the stones, and then the eggs will fall down through. Into the tray. Yep. And then I, you know, I pull the tray out and dump That's the... That's a pretty slick system. Dump the eggs into a container and move them to the fry, to the fry tank. Yeah, I've seen a lot of different, um, a lot of different systems for collecting non-adhesive eggs. Yeah. Uh, but that's probably one of the simplest. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I try to keep it simple. Yeah. These, uh, these guys here are saffron shiners. Huh. They're um they're you know, same thing, same same setup. Now what are your plans with uh with the fry when you get them up to size? Uh I'll be I'll be selling the, the fry or you know, oh, re, okay. re to other hobbyists and stuff. 
what's the temperature in in your fish room? It's not uh, heated, I guess. So no. So this is the temperature and humidity right now is uh, 67.8 and 44 percent humidity. Oh, okay. Um, but the, the, tanks, the tanks are 64.8 degrees, huh. 64.2, 62, 62, because they're closer to the floor. That's pretty much native temperature, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, yep. And then these are, these guys I just got a few days ago. These are Piedmont shiners, uh, and these are actually a, uh, Undescribed subspecies of the red lip shiner. Huh. You caught them with a trap, you said? Uh, no, these ones I these ones I did not collect. These came from uh, Jonah's Aquarium. Oh, okay. Where are they from? Uh, so these these guys are native ranges, and uh, they they range from uh, Virginia down into over to Tennessee and North Carolina. Okay. Yeah, they're obviously related to to our bluefin killie. Yeah. Similar body shape and markings. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I really like it. What are you feeding these guys? Uh, so all of these guys primarily get um, right here, the uh, color enhancing bug bites bug or bites. The formula oh. bug bites. Huh. And the, I mean, they they absolutely love that. And then they also feed them. I'll feed them some of the rods food as well. Uh huh. Ooh. So, so it's like, really not a prepared food. You're still feeding them essentially what they would find in the wild. Yeah. Yep. So native food, in effect. Have you tried feeding uh, any of your your culture, cultured food to these guys yet? Yeah, I uh, so I, I supplement some of these tanks. Uh, the rainbow shiners, I'll use. I'll, I'll squirt some of the Daphne and the green water in there, and you can see them swimming around through it and stuff. So I think that also helps with triggering spawning behavior. Right. Is you know yeah, them that's knowing a good the point. Point. Talk a little more about that, because that's something people don't understand. Yeah. Is, is the, one of the things that triggers breeding is is food for babies in the environment. Yeah. yeah, so if the females, the females especially, if they, if they are well fed and know that there's a, a good food source, it, it promotes them to to produce eggs and start spawning. Right. Uh, whereas if, if they're not well fed, um, you're, you're a lot less likely to get them to spawn. Or if there's no food in there for the fry. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. They're pretty fish. Yeah. And it's, it's horrible because like even, I mean, it's, you can't really see, the color is really blue. Oh, that's pretty. Wow. Huh. And so they, they were spawning this morning and they were all fired up bright, bright red. And oh, yeah. yeah. More so than they are right now. They're pretty much calmed down a bit. Huh. Nice. Yeah, so those are, those are the four breeding projects I'm working on right now. Uh, everybody. Aside from the the rainbow shiners, I've had for about about a year and a half now. Um, everybody else, I've the uh, mountain red belly dace and the saffron shiners I collected in Virginia two weeks ago. So they're they're new, and then these guys I just got in a few days ago. That's great. I love it. Yep. Yeah, very simple, very basic, and and does not create distractions. Now you've right. got a biotope going here. What do you have yeah. in it? Uh, so this is a Smith River uh, biotope. So it's a, a riverbank section of the biotope. In this tank, 
is uh, there's Roanoke darters, sand, uh, excuse me, fantail darters, uh, Johnny darters. Uh, I've got mottled sculpin, um, northern hog sucker, bluehead chubs, and central stone rollers. So we're the Smith River, you said? Yeah, so Smith River is in west is in southern West Virginia. Right, right. Huh. Yeah, these were all collected at um as well. So you went down there and collected. Yep, I uh, I took a trip down to Virginia and all over Virginia and West Virginia uh, about two weeks ago now and, and did a big collecting trip. I love West Virginia. I've yeah, been oh, yeah. collecting there in years. I'm trying to get back up to Maryland. Look at that. Oh, they are so cool. Yeah, and you can see, darter, like, I'm, yeah. I'm amazed at the camouflage that little darter has. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a, it's not focusing, but that's a model sculpin right there. Sculpin, right. Um, the little guy on the wood. Let me see. Yeah, that little guy. Yeah. Um, that's a northern hog sucker. And then wow. these guys are poop chubs that are all up in my face. And right. for being... For being wild caught two weeks ago, these guys are really, really tame. They really are. <laughs> They've really adapted. It you yeah. know, it demonstrates that you really can create an environment that that the fish are comfortable in. If you yeah. try to try to duplicate a natural a natural environment, it's gonna it's gonna calm them right down. Yeah. That's nice. That's really nice. What and are you saying? Thinking, what do you same thing? What do you yeah, feeding all of, that tank? All of my fish get pretty much the same same diet. Same thing. Now, um, you didn't do anything special with the water in there, did you? Nope. Okay, that's cool. Really nice. I see you have a heater. I do. In that tank, are you? Is that no, elevated? Yeah. Are you keeping the temperature up? No, there's no heater in this. That's a, a sponge filter. Oh, what was I that one? That? Really? Looks like a heater. The right here in the back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. That's the gas spout of a sponge filter. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I already didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, none of, none of the tanks are heated. So what's in there? Which one? This one? Nothing, yeah. Uh, there's nothing in here now. So all of the fish that are in this tank were in here while I was setting up that one. Oh, all right. And now this, this is going to be... So the plan with both of these tanks here um, is they're both going to be the same biotope but opposite sides of the river bank well how cool is that so um and then also the other side uh, you know i'll be cutting I'll, i'm going to cut a viewing window in the the drywall behind the tank right so, you can, so i can view them from the other side of the wall nice and then you'll you know you'll be looking at a cutout section of both sides of the river bank of the same same biotope i love it Argo, what's Argo? Argo Siliconio. Nice to see you, Argo. We're gonna turn you, turn you blue, and Ebor and Millie. We just here's some of blue. Here's oh, some of my, my collected driftwood. Oh, how nice! You got that up where in your area, did you? Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I go collecting as often as as often as possible, and uh, anytime I find interesting pieces of driftwood or anything that right. I can take home with me, that's what all this is. And then now, talk to us about about how you or if you cure your driftwood. Um. So I I don't bother curing driftwood because I 
I know what to look for. I collect I collect only wood that's well weathered. Um, so it's already cured, in other words. Yeah, pretty much. I'm not right. you know, I'm not out there collecting fresh fresh branches that just fell off and stuff. Exactly. Um, I'm I'm collecting stuff that no longer has any of the any of the saps or, or oils from the tree yeah, yeah, yeah. in the wood, so that might you know may or may not cause problems. And I I only collect uh, harder woods and stuff that's not you know falling apart, rotten. Okay. Now I have done that in like um, uh, blackwater tanks. Yeah. And that it's really very beneficial in a black water tank because it gives you so much organics, and yep. and it um, it breaks down and gives creates a, a very a very thick humic uh, bed. But I agree with you about hardwood. Well, that's like this. So this this piece of wood here is uh, I'm pretty sure is cedar. And it's it's fairly soft in most spots, so this is going to be used for a cedar swamp uh, biotope. Nice. And you know that that'll that'll break down and add that'll some tannin down. and yeah. some, some humic matter to the to the tank. Yeah. You can see it's like you know flaking off here anyway. Right. You have cedar up there. Yep. Uh, up up in the uh, you know. The uh, higher alpine regions and stuff. Oh, right. Okay. But yeah, so that's all. This is, again, is all locally collected driftwood. <coughs> and then I've got this right here, which is my my uh, Heterondria Formosa tank. And then it's oh, also, cool. it's also oh, where I... Time favorites. Yeah, so this is also where I culture all my scuds and my my ram horns and my bladder snails. Cool. And I I don't feed this tank at all. It's you know it's a little self sustaining biotope ecosystem. Yeah, you know I got into a conversation with a guy recently, um, and he was saying you can't do that. Um, I, I I do it. <laughs> I know I do it too. What what he's what what he's missing is he's a killing guy, and he sets up typically bare bottom tanks. Yeah. So if he puts scuds or Daphne or something like that in there, they're never going to be able to breed. Right. So so they get eaten up right mm. away. And he just okay. hadn't got his head wrapped around the fact that you create a breeding population in that substrate that allows uh, allows yeah. enough of these these uh, macrofauna to escape predation and be able to breed in order to maintain an ongoing population. So you really can have that kind of a food balance. Yeah, and you can see my substrate here is a very thick layer of leaf litter, leaf litter and right. fron, fronds yeah, from, from the hornwort and stuff, and all just you know decaying leaf matter and stuff. And I haven't seen a fish in there yet, but for most are pretty tiny. Yeah, I I just tried to show you one, and he darted off as I oh, I got okay. him. Yeah, there's a fry right there. Oh, sure enough, or a male. Yeah, no, it's. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a fry. It's a fry. Okay. It's not much smaller than a male. Yeah. But uh. Yeah, that's nice. That that tank is so instructive because it creates an, a a total environment, a food web environment yeah. that allows the fish to thrive in it. You could have considerably more fish in there and still be able to maintain that balance. Yep. And then you could, I mean, it's absolutely covered in duckweed and everything duckweed, else. Right, right. Nice. But yeah, I mean, uh, aside from 
the tanks I've already showed you. I've got one tank upstairs in my sunroom, and that's my my seventy three gallon stream uh, stream tank. Oh, that is such a cool tank. Do you want to walk up and and show us that? Uh, I can try. It's it's uh, I mean, it's dark out, and that tank uses natural sunlight only. So. Oh, that's right. So I don't know. Let me. I'll run up and show you. Okay. Yeah, that's a really remarkable tank. Um, this is this is my forty gallon breeder that we're setting up as a, a black water tank, but a native a U, a Florida black water tank. We do right. have um, some snails in there that are not native, <laughs> but it's coming along pretty well. Those are, are uh, from a set. Are you there? Right. Yeah, I mean, you can't really, you can't really see a lot. It's such a cool tank. Yeah, so this is this is a custom built tank. Uh, I built it, you know, built it all myself. Explain how it works. Um. All right. So there's, like, I guess it's sorry, it's hard to see, but there's a there's a false bottom here. Um. Right. And then down here in this corner, there's a a linear uh, a linear cross flow pump that basically pulls water down pushes it through the false bottom and then back up the other side. So it creates a linear flow. So that's a and solid, solid false bottom. Yep. It's, I mean, it, it's a, uh, it starts right here and it, you know, goes all it's the way to this side here. There's only, there's only a four inch, four inch section on each side. Is that acrylic? Nope. It's all glass. Glass. Okay. Yeah, I used uh, half-inch glass for the bottom and then quarter-inch glass for everything else. Did you seal it in, or is it sitting on something, sitting on stilts? What's that? Is it, on, is it on legs, or is it sealed in, the false bottom? Um, it's got it's got some two-inch glass uh, legs great. in there, and then, okay. it, then it is uh, silicone to the front and back glass. Okay. Yeah, I've but, seen, uh, you know, there are a lot of different people figuring out ways to do that. I think what you've done is the simplest system. Does, is it built to prevent fish from getting into that raceway? Oh, yeah. Oh, there's... They can't... You can't really see it, but there, there's uh, plastic mesh grating over top of the, you know, at the very top of the entrance to the raceway. Okay. On both sides. And that prevents fish from getting down, down into there. They, they would probably love it if they could. You yeah. know, like current. <laughs> yep. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's decent current flowing through here. Not right now because it, it, it kind of shuts down at nighttime, so you know, gives them oh, okay. a, a chance to rest and stuff. Oh. What kind of fish you got in there? Uh, so there's rainbow darters, uh, yellowfin shiners, mountain red belly dace, and a central stone roller. So is that is that native biotype? Is that yeah, this this is a um, uh, another Virginia or uh, excuse me, I can't think. <laughs> West Virginia. Uh, yeah, West Virginia biotope. Okay. Except with the exception of the rainbow sh uh, rainbow uh, rainbow darters, they're more from like uh, further south. Yeah, uh, actually, further north, like uh, oh. Uh, Lake Michigan drainage area and stuff. Oh, okay. Huh. So, what are your what are your um, plans uh, for? I'm gonna head back downstairs now. Sure. 
That's nice. Thank you for that. Just it's really nice. remarkable. I don't think I've ever done a, a stream tank. I need to do that. I've got a few more of these, these 30 gallon four foot tanks. That yeah. would be an ideal one to set up that way because it's not too big. Yeah. Yeah. So that, so again, I had to be a little quiet because, you know, kids uh, sleeping upstairs and everything. But, uh, let me well, hold on. Yeah. Nice. But yeah. So, so, so what, uh, are your, uh, yeah, go what are you thinking about for species that you don't have? What, what's, what's on your, uh, What's on your your wish list? Um, so one of I know so one of the tanks that I I'll be working on next is going to be a uh, a blind cave tetra biotope. So I know that's that's one species of fish that I'll I'll be looking to get here shortly. And then that's uh, interesting. I've I've yeah. got a few here. Um, yeah. You just can't keep them with anything else. They're they're uh, they're like they're a piranha. I mean, they're, oh yeah, they're <laughs> a little piranha. That's they're and that's fine with me. I've got I've got a forty eight gallon column tank um, that I'm gonna turn into a limestone cave biotope and stuff. And I've got wow, you know, I've got Texas Holly Rock and stuff that I'm gonna use in it as well. And oh, that's uh, a cool idea. Yeah, yeah. It's well, so hard it's, to know what to do with those column tanks. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna use expanding foam, and you know, do get the whole stalactites coming down and everything. And wow, well, it, it's gonna it's gonna look pretty cool, I think, when it's done. That's neat. I like that. Very very clever. I've had a couple of them and never really figured out what to do with them. Yeah, that should be that should be fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love the, the shape and size. Right getting, if you have trouble getting the fish, let me know. They're okay. pretty commonly available down here. Yeah. What else? You talked about uh, to get some uh, pygmy sunfish. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So another thing, uh, another tank that I have um, in mind that I'm I'm in the process of working on is. Uh, the tank behind me is a, like I said, it's a 180 gallon uh, Lake Champlain biotope, and next to it is a stand that I just I just built a couple uh, probably two months ago. I built finished building the stand, but that's for a second 180 gallon oh, that nice. is going to be uh, another. It's going to be part of the same biotope, but the tank behind me is going to be a more community fish where. The second tank is going to be a predatory tank, and the bowfin will be moved into there. And then I'll be—I'm um, going to have uh, yellow bullheads and uh, long nose gar as well. You going to try to do any pickerel? Um, probably. Uh, I don't know. I thought about pickerel, but I think I think uh, the stocking that I want to do. Right now, is is you know, pickerel is probably going to be a bit much for for the stocking. Because I I can get you know I, I I know a great spot to catch chain pickerel uh, all day, and I I would love a, a nice chain pickerel. I I thought about keeping one for a while. Yeah, they're beautiful fish. Yeah, yep, yeah. and um, you know, I have I have plans to build a pond in the in the yard and everything too. So, you know, I have uh, room for grow out and everything because chain pickerel do get, you know, 30, 30 inches or so. Right. <laughs> so, um, but, but yeah, uh, I've, I've thought about pickerel and, um, probably, probably deciding against it and, and picking, um, the long nose gar over pickerel just because I, I like the, the more prehistoric look to them. Now, is that something that you're going to be able to get locally? Yeah, I mean, I, there's there's a few places that I could catch them locally, yeah. Uh, 
nice. So are you a fisherman? You, you go fishing with a pole? Yeah, I mean, I'm a... I'm an outdoorsman. I, I love I love fishing. I love hiking, camping. You know, just being out in nature in general. But yeah, I, uh, I try to fish as often as possible. Do you overnight in the in the forest? Yeah, I've I've done it before. It's hard to do it now with the you know family and kids and everything. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch these guys who have got the overnighting channels. And yeah. that's that's the struggle for them, is is their children. Yeah, it's like uh, you know, I've got I've got an eighteen month old son and a uh, eight week old son. Oh my word! So you know, you're, you're you know, my even my started, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> my my, you know, I'm starting to know his arc, you know. And exactly. Got to got to keep all species. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But uh. But even my my Virginia collection trip, like I, I left, I left Monday night at ten thirty at night. Uh, we drove down there straight to the first location, and it was an eleven and a half hour drive. And uh, so we, you know, we got there at nine nine thirty or so in the morning. Wow! Fished there for a couple hours, moved on to a couple different other sites. I think we hit about eight different sites, uh, from Roanoke, Virginia over into southern West Virginia huh. and then worked our way back up and, you know, left left Virginia about 6.30 at night and got back here 5.30 Wednesday morning. My word. Did you do oh. Harper's Ferry at all? Uh, I don't think so. That's um, That would be southeast. Yeah, we, we, we hit primarily... Uh, like Roanoke and West. Yeah, so right closer to Ohio. Yeah, so it was like yeah. Roanoke, Blacksburg, Virginia, um, oh, yeah. down like Smith River in, into West Virginia and stuff. Nice. Yeah, it's beautiful country. I love it there. Yeah, yeah it was it was a long day though. <laughs> I'll bet. Yeah, with very little sleep. You said we. Who went with you? Uh, so it was myself and uh, another NANFA member, because I'm a member of NANFA, North American Native Fish Association. Oh, wonderful. So, yeah, it was uh, him and I went, him, him and I drove down. He's local to me. He lives probably four or five minutes away from me. Wow. Huh. What does he have? Uh, he, he keeps a number of different, he has like 110 fish tanks. So. Oh, my word. Yeah, so it's, it, I mean, he keeps everything. He's a big killifish guy, and he's actually who I got my head around here Formosa from. Okay. Um, you know, I met him, I met him at a, uh, a Unica swap, which is Upstate New York Killifish Association. Huh. And uh, I met him there and got to talking about natives and stuff, because I was specifically looking for, like, bluefin killies. Uh, you know other other native killies, and he's like the only native killies that you'll find here really are are uh, least killifish, and wow. he's like I happen to have uh, three of them, <laughs> right. so I was like I'll take them. But then you know I got into talking to him and stuff, and found out that he lives fairly close to me, and um, you know we we set up uh, a collecting trip and stuff, and oh that's great. Now you you're you're uh you said you're a member of NANFA. Yep. Um did they have a did they have meetings? Or is there a local chapter? There's there's not there's not really a local chapter, um, which you know, kind of I, I you know, I wish there was, but um and they do have meetings, but a lot of the meetings are like Midwest and stuff. Yeah, you know, and they're they're meetups, and then it's you know a, a collecting trip and stuff. But they're all in like, uh, I think the 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 one for this year, I believe, is in Wisconsin. Huh. So it's like you know, it's right. It's a long, it's a long trip. Right. Yeah. But uh, I wish it. I wish it did have like local chapters and stuff, and ha you know have more of a localized. Uh, presence well you're gonna have to start it 
Yeah. You know, just start getting together once a month or once every yeah. couple of months with some local guys and go, you know, it'll grow. And that's what, and that's what, um, the, this guy and I were talking about is, uh, you know, starting, starting, uh, uh local meetups and stuff and doing some collection trips that's and everything. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That's really the way to get a club started. It just, yeah. you know, friends and associates getting together regularly to share what you're doing. Yeah. Yep. And that always grows. You always, you know, find new people who want to be a part of it. Yeah. What else are you doing that's exciting, Kenny? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that's that's pretty much it right now. It's you know, I've got my, I've got my breeding projects going on. I've got a couple different ideas that I'm playing with for for uh, additional setups and stuff, and just slowly working away at my fish room. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's it, it's. It shows yep. a lot of thought, um, and 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 some real discipline to be able to maintain things in a in a controlled way. Yeah, yeah, and I I mean I can give you guys you guys kind of got a, a brief tour of the fish room, but I can do a little better tour if you'd like. Sure. Yeah, we got a few minutes left. Okay. All right. So, turn some lights on here. <laughs> oh, these are so these are my um my live food culture jars. Nice. And you know, they, jars. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, honestly, all I do is I take I take tank water or rainwater, and I clean out my sponge filters in them, and then I set them oh. in this sun window. Yeah. I mean, I've got leaves in this one, but there's these are absolutely full of uh, different pods and infusoria and daphnia, and there's nice. some uh, blood worms in this one. And I just top it off with with fish tank water, right? Periodically, as I as I harvest from it. Yeah. But so this is my basic layout of my fish room. You know, come down the stairs, and then I've got. Yeah, you've made it a very comfortable place too. Yeah, yeah, and it's like it, it's in the it's in the progress of being completed and stuff. But you know, I've got the 180. There's another 180 that's going here. Um, the stream tank I'm gonna be moving down, and it's gonna be up against this wall here oh, where this cool. stuff is. Yeah. Somewhere, you so know, it's not gonna have the, It won't have the sunlight there. No, it's not. It's not going to be natural sunlight anymore. You know, I, I, it's been that way for a year, a year or more now. And uh, so I'm going to move it down here and rescape it and and turn it into something different, but still right. stream tank. Uh -huh. But uh, so that's that's going to go against this wall right here. And then I've got this will be the blind cave tetra tank. Uh, this is my my workstation for you know diy projects and stuff like that and cool. all my various my various fish foods and everything and oh. my various uh native fish books and textbooks about fish disease and right right you know dr steinbro's aquarium hot handbook and everything all my my stickers for fish fam people which i need to oh. add to i need a i need a father fish sticker up there I need to get you some stickers. <laughs> I'm out of stickers. I need need to get some more made. Uh, I've got you know Brian Shrimp culturing right there. All my camera gear, but here's some empty tanks that I've got that I'll be working with. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. So this railing is going to be going. You know, this obviously goes right here. The railing. Uh, so that's going to be going back up, and then I'm, I've got a, a tank that I'm building. It's a custom 110 gallon, so it's eight foot long, and it's going to stretch oh, wow. from right here to the to the bar. Um, so that'll be an eight foot long, uh, 110. That'll be going right there. 
Uh, nice. Like I said, the second 180. Uh, I've got a bookshelf that I'm putting here for more of my, my aquarium books and, and native fish books and stuff. Uh, this tank is being moved into the room. And then, like I said, I'll, I'm cutting holes in the drywall here and here. Okay. So you'll be able to view the 229 gallons through from this side. And then the breeding room, I've got to get two more racks that are going here and here. And those will be more tanks for fry grow out and stuff. Wow. And don't mind the mess. That's that's not there. <laughs> Kenny, thank you so much for this. Yeah. And I guess the only other thing I didn't mention is all of my tanks are run off of sponge filters. And I've got a central centralized air system running around the whole perimeter of the basin. Oh, good for you. Yeah. And it's what, you know, pump? just tap in wherever I need to, to drop airlines down. What kind of pump you got? Uh, I'll show you real quick. And it, you know, goes through the wall there. Oh, and here's my diagram of my fish room. So I, I took the time to actually draw out a diagram of how I wanted to do the layout and I'll tell you what, it's really important to do that. Yeah. Because it allows you to think through how you uh, want things to, to work with each other. Oh, there it right. is. Yeah, so that's the air pump that I'm running. Now, that's not yeah. sitting on a shelf. You've got that hanging. That's yeah, it's pretty a, it's slick. It's from the, from the raptor. Pretty slick. <laughs> that reduces yeah. vibration. Yeah, it reduces it dramatically. And yeah. I don't know if you can hear it running right now, but it's it's pretty Not quiet. At all. Wow. And it's funny because a lot of the reviews said that this air pump particularly was loud. I yeah. I mean I hardly hear it at all. Right. Ever. And yeah, once like, you oh, get, get a hot got, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah I've thing, got one of those. I never thought about suspending it that way though. That's a really good idea. Yeah, I've just, I mean, I've got a piece of the, the plumber tape here that's just screwed into the, yeah, exactly. into the and suspended oh. by the handle. Very cool. I like it. And then my my bar here has a wet sink, which my python's tied into and stuff, so. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, that's nice. So you got to drain... <laughs> Right there. <laughs> yeah, so you know, I can I can fill or drain the tank straight from the straight from the sink, uh, the tap on the sink. Wow. And I run I run a carbon filter on that sink as well to help help remove chlorine and chloramines. Right. And that's it. And that I mean that that python hose reaches all the way around here and into the room and up against the back wall, so it's just long enough to reach everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And then my little fireplace for ambiance. Yeah. <laughs> ah, very cool. Thank you again, Kenny. Very yeah, much. Fun. That's super. Right. I appreciate okay. you having me up here. Well, thank you. I appreciate you coming up. Okay, so this this video will be posted. It'll be up in the morning for review. Once I get to about 10 of these, I'm going to move them over to Patreon and create a library uh, that people will be able to plug into. To, I mean, there are probably 25 brilliant ideas that, that we just went through tonight with Kenny's Fish Room that anybody setting up more than one tank would be delighted to learn, so. And you're, it looks like you're growing your fish as, you, as you're able to catch them. So your population is pretty much uh, an a population that's accessible to you. Right, so yeah. Far. Yep. I think uh, there's, I think I only have one species of fish that I didn't personally catch. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Um, actually, no, two. The the rainbow shiner I didn't catch, and the rainbow darters I, I purchased as well. Wow. 
Well, thank you again. We're at uh, we're at ten o'clock. Yeah. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, I appreciate you having me again. Yeah. Thank you, Kenny, very much. Thanks everybody for plugging in. We kind of lost track of the chat. Um, let's see. <laughs> wanted to make sure. I mean, I've got know. I've got plenty of time if you if you want to keep going. Um, like we can answer some questions from chat. Well, it's yeah, up let's to you. go into the chat a bit. That would be. See what what folks are talking about. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm, I'm not really stressed for time right now. What kind of work do you do? Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm uh for for actual like work work. Work work right. Okay, so I'm like making so I'm, money. Uh, I'm a I'm a mason. I do st you know masonry work. I do brick okay. block dome work. Um, in the winter time, I I work for the same company, but we do snow removal, and I'm a heavy equipment operator. So I run a I run a 944 Hyundai uh, loader with a 18 foot push on the front of it, and wow, cool, you know, do all of our uh, our our road, contracts and stuff that we have. Road, road work. Uh, mostly no, private no, no. contracts okay. and uh, like big, you know, one of the, one of the things we do is uh, target distribution. So, uh, you know, we, we plowed an entire facility for target distribution, which is uh, oh. 1. 1. 1.3 million square feet. Oh my word. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, aside from that, I work for a uh, local 14 stagehand union doing uh stagehand work. Like setting, you know, setting up and loading in and loading out uh, concerts and shows and stuff. I'm a oh, really? yeah, oh. I'm a brigger and a forklift operator. Wow, very cool. Let's see. Kenny <laughs> D says, "Cool, love the fish room. Everything going on there, excellent. Keep it rolling, Mister Kenny. Wish you and your family mm -hmm. peace, love, and light." Yeah, I'm actually I'm just getting over COVID right now, so that's oh my that's fun. How are you doing with it? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm getting like as you can see, I've still got a little bit of a cough and uh, and stuff, but um, uh, I'm doing good. It was a rough couple days, but feeling much better the last two days. Did you take anything for it? Uh, just vitamin C and and uh and uh, ginger and stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> Some homeopathic stuff. Peplin is here. Hey, Peplin. Peplin Creek. We need to get you up here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you guys a call. Let's see if we can get. You've got an operation. We very much need to to feature on uh, the Noah Project. And yeah. Monster Fish Gill is another one. And we've got some incredible fish keepers here. Janus Reef, hello, hello. Well, hello, all right. hello, vibe to everybody else in chat. Hi, everybody. So I haven't had a chance to say hi to everybody, but right. Vibes Aquatics. Make sure you get over and. Uh, uh, Signed oh, up I, to Kenny's. Yeah, there's another thing I wanted to mention, uh, if you don't mind. Is I'm last I checked, I was like five subscribers from 500, and when I hit 500, I'm doing a uh, a giveaway. So oh, okay. The the giveaway is gonna cons consist of a fifty dollar gift card to uh, Jonah's Aquarium, which is who is an online seller of North American native fish. Nice. Um. A fifty dollar gift card to Aquarium Co-op, and five of my Rainbow Shiners that I'm breeding. So it's you know three separate giveaways, uh, all all once I hit five hundred subs. And I'll do that in a you know live stream format. Now you have a you got a website I'm looking at right now. Oh yeah, fishfam.link. Yep. Right. And it's all my, you know, my YouTube link and 
uh, Instagram link and my, my email address and stuff so you can contact me. Let's get over to YouTube. Yeah, actually, if you want, you can show there's a I have a playlist for the stream tank. You can show one of those videos so people can see what it looks like in, in the daytime. 494. Let's jump on it, guys. Let's get them to yeah. 500 right now. We can do that right now. It's ABC Aquatic Biotope Creations. Yeah. Get over there. I'm subscribed. And I rang the bell. <laughs> and I got all clicked. Yeah. Let's see. Playlist. Stream yeah, stream tank. Yeah. And I would I would do uh, the one where it says stream tank and natural sunlight. And that'll so that'll show you what it looks like, you know, what it looks like during the day and stuff. Right. That's wonderful. Yeah, wow. and this is a, this is a view looking upstream. Yeah, that is so cool. And you can see how the fish hang out in the current and stuff. Yeah. How deep is your substrate in there? Uh, it's only about an inch and a half deep. Okay. Yeah, there's, yeah, that rock work is cool. there's two planted sections, one at the very end that we're looking at and one here to the to the left. And right. those those planted sections are blocked off by some of the rock work and then those are probably four inches of uh, um, a base layer of uh, uh, soil. And um, there's also, uh, what the hell is it? Uh, a fluval stratum. So it's a uh, regular dirt mixed with fluval stratum. Okay. And then it's got a, a pea gravel cap. What's the plant? Uh, that's Vallisneria Americana. Pretty. So cool. Yeah, there's a, a look at some of the rainbow rainbow darters and some spot fin shiners that used to be in there. Nice. Yeah. But that gives you a better idea of what the uh, what the tank looks like because you know yeah, it's hard to see what that means. Right. Let's see. Let me get out of here. We're at four ninety nine. <laughs> I appreciate it, everybody. One more, guys. Need one more. Let's hit five hundred. Yeah, and then uh, you know, hit the notification button because you'll have to stay tuned uh, for when I make the announcement about the live stream for the giveaway. If you're, you know, if you're interested in the giveaway, if you're not, and you're just subscribing for the heck of it, then I appreciate you anyway. That's nice. <clears throat> yeah, and I I mean it's I'm I'm amazed at how fast like the channel has grown for me and stuff. You know, it, it's been 
I guess if you think about it, it's not really fast, but I never expected to be, you know, have 500 subscribers or, or even I more than you mean. Yeah. And, you know, I posted my first video, uh, I think a year and a half ago was, was when I first posted the first, uh, video of my stream tank, uh, right wow. after I set it up and stuff. And, uh, that's got like 15,000 views on it right now. Wow. Nice. 500. There it is. Yes. Right there. <laughs> Woo. Look at Appreciate that. everybody, man. I, I really do. Like, Dynamite. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, we've done it all. <laughs> Kenny, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, again, happy follow to, Thanks for having me on. Happy to do this. It was great fun. Good night, yeah. all. We'll see you. I'll be back Wednesday. Uh, Aqua Funk is going to be with us Wednesday night. That'll be at 9 o'clock. And then next week, we got two real surprises. They're going to be at oddball times, but some pretty remarkable people. So just try to keep up and keep in touch, and you, you're going to get some nice surprises. Love it, Kenny. Appreciate you. Yeah, again, thanks thanks for having me up. You know, you it's, it's been a pleasure. Good night, all. Have a good night, everybody. Bye.